In this video, we'll show you how to build a serverless real-time credit card fraud detection solution using Google Cloud. My name is Paul Long Lin, a developer advocate for Google Cloud. And together with Quantify, a GCP premier partner, we co-developed a design pattern to help you accelerate building a fraud detection solution with Google Cloud. I'm Ishan Tyagi. I'm a senior business analyst at Quantify. I am Pawan Kumar, and I'm a senior cloud engineer at Quantify. Let's first talk about fraud detection in the industry. What does Quantify see? Fraud detection is a major concern for many businesses and financial services. Global losses from payment fraud have tripled in the last 10 years. In the UK alone, for every £100 spent using credit cards, 7.5 pence was lost to fraud. So the challenge is to build and manage a real-time fraud detection solution at scale. So in this video, we'll show you how to build a real-time fraud detection solution broken down into the following sections. How to prepare the training data in BigQuery. How to build the fraud detection model directly within BigQuery using BigQuery ML. How to build a pipeline to do real-time model predictions using Dataflow. How to set up alert-based notifications when fraud is detected using PubSub and how to create interactive dashboards for business and technical operations using Data Studio. And the code and instructions to follow this design pattern are all linked in the video description below. Let's talk about preparing the training data in BigQuery. To detect if a transaction is fraud or not, you want to have information on the transaction and the customer's information. So normally these historical records are in separate tables. You may have one table for transactions and another to keep track of your customer's demographic information. But to make it easier to show you here, we have combined both of the data sets into a single table for training. This table is going to be our training data, where each row is a transaction that occurred in the past, containing details of the transaction and some customer information. Each column is a feature, such as what time the transaction occurred, what the merchant was, category, and so on. There's also a label feature called his fraud, which is a value of one or zero. This is what the model will then try to predict, a probability of fraud between zero and one. The data here is simulated data, so you can replace this with your own real data for your needs. Could you elaborate on your choice of BigQuery here? It's an extremely scalable data warehouse. It's fast and easy to use. And we find that customers choose BigQuery because you get the best of enterprise-grade data storage, data analytics, machine learning, all in one place. We have customers storing terabytes of data in BigQuery, and they have the capability to train machine learning models within BigQuery directly. So speaking of machine learning, the next step is building the machine learning model to detect fraud using BigQuery ML. Perhaps the magic of BigQuery ML is that without needing to move your data out of BigQuery, using BigQuery ML, you can train and deploy machine learning models directly using SQL. And you don't have to procure or maintain extra infrastructure because it uses BigQuery's built-in auto-scaling infrastructure to handle model training and deployment at scale. And at Quantify, we find our customers really enjoy being able to use the democratized ML capabilities which allow analysts to run machine learning models using SQL. So with the training data, we can train a model using just SQL with BigQuery ML. While there are several classification algorithms available to choose from with BigQuery ML, like logistic regression, deep neural networks, and auto ML tables, we find that XGBoost models work really well with minimal hyperparameter tuning required, making it easy to build good models quickly. So in the create model statement, we give the model a name, like simple model, set the model type to booster tree classifier, for XGBoost, set the input label calls to is fraud as the label of zero or one that we want to predict, and then select the training data. You can also adjust some hyperparameters such as num parallel tree and max iterations, for example. We were able to train this model within just 10 minutes over 1.3 million rows and 10 features, which is really fast considering there is no need to set up extra infrastructure to train the model. Now, I noticed that you called the model simple model. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Yes. In practice, just looking at the transactional data and the customer's demographics, like what country they are in and their age, is actually very likely to be insufficient to produce a strong performing fraud detection model. So what would you recommend then to build a good fraud detection model? Well, there are many ways. 
one way which we can show in this design pattern is to do more feature engineering by also looking at the customer's historical activity. If someone typically spends on average $100 per month on their credit card, and this transaction shows you are spending $2,000, then that might be unusual. So you would want the model to pick up on this by adding in relevant features. And this is perhaps just a starting point. In reality, you may want to have a lot more features and you may want to improve your model in other ways like model selection, hyperparameter tuning, or model ensembling, which are all possible with BigQuery ML. Because there are so many approaches depending on the data available and the exact scenario, in this design pattern, we just show you how you can get started with a few extra aggregate features of the customer activity, such as how long it's been since their last transaction, the average spend on the credit card per week or per month, and also the number of transactions of average in the last 24 hours, just as examples of what you could do. With the models built in BigQuery ML, could you show us how you evaluate the models? You can see the evaluation metrics directly on the BigQuery UI under the evaluation tab. You can see the log loss, ROC, AUC, precision, recall, accuracy, F1 score, and other visualizations as well. To actually compare F1 score across models, you can use select star from ml.evaluate and then the model name. You can do this for both the models and combine the results using union all. To compare metrics, you can use F1 score and ROC AUC, where the higher the values are, the better the model performs. For imbalanced data sets like in credit card fraud, where you have mostly normal transactions, then we recommend using the F1 score to compare the models. And indeed, if you look at the model that uses aggregate behavioral data, the F1 score is 0.78 versus the simple model's F1 score of 0.56. So it's improved dramatically by incorporating the historical data. Although there's a room for model improvement as discussed earlier, we'll just use this second model to demonstrate how you can use a BigQuery ML model like this one in a streaming pipeline for real-time fraud detection. With the model built, let's talk about making predictions to detect fraud. Now, for predictions, there is batch and online predictions. Uh, could you elaborate on the differences? Sure. For batch predictions, this is when you want to make predictions on lots of data in bulk at a time, which you can do in BigQuery ML with select star from ml.predict, your model and the data you want to make predictions on. Batch predictions are useful in making large amounts of predictions in a single shot and you can do this with BigQuery ML, but they are not optimized for real-time inference, where you may have lots of predictions you need to do per second. So that's where online prediction comes in, which is for real-time predictions in low latency situations for higher frequencies of predictions. To do online predictions, you will need to export and host the BigQuery ML model on AI platform. Another way to export the model for online predictions is instead of hosting the model on AI platform as its own endpoint, you can similarly export to Google Cloud Storage, but serve it directly in a Dataflow pipeline. This may be helpful if you want to optimize for lower average latency, but it may also make model maintainability a little bit more difficult. So in this design pattern, we'll just show you how the model is hosted as its own endpoint on AI platform for online predictions. So Pavan, how does that work? You can easily do it via two steps. Step one. Export the model to a cloud storage location by running BQ extract command with the model name and the destination location as arguments. Step two, once it's in cloud storage, you will need to create a model on AI platform, which can hold one or more versions of the model. So the next step is to create a model version by running the gcloud AI platform versions create command, providing the GCS location of the previously exported model from BigQuery ML. And then to make predictions, you can send a request to the deployed model using the gcloud AI platform predict command by passing in the transaction data. So with the model hosted, the next step is putting it together into a pipeline that can handle transactions in real time, make predictions, and then send notification alerts for fraud. To create the pipeline, you can build a data flow pipeline with the following elements. First, it ingests new transactions from a PubSub subscription. PubSub is an event messaging service. So the PubSub subscription is waiting for any new transactions to come in as essentially JSON messages. As a new transaction is ingested, 
Dataflow then does a lookup on the customer's historical activity to do some aggregations. The lookups can be stored on something like Firestore, which is a serverless NoSQL database. With the combined data, Dataflow then invokes the fraud detection model on AI platform and gets a response with the probability that it's fraud between zero and one. The prediction outputs are then stored in a separate table in BigQuery and in parallel, Dataflow also triggers a notification to a PubSub topic, which can then trigger any downstream notifications. When it comes to detecting fraud in real time, what is the latency that you get with this pipeline from the incoming transaction to the notification? And what do you typically see your customers asking for in terms of their required latency? For some of our customers, the detection has to typically occur within seconds for it to be effective. In this pipeline, the latency between when a transaction occurs and when the fraud notification is sent is around two to eight seconds, which falls in line with what we see institutions asking for. And what if customers need much lower latency? The first way is, instead of hosting the model as an endpoint on AI platform, you can see decreases in latency by exporting the model in Google Cloud Storage and serve the predictions directly from Dataflow. As mentioned earlier, However, if you still want to keep the model endpoint as is on AI platform, then you can try to upgrade the machine type, increasing the number of nodes for model serving, or increasing the quota limit on AI platform predictions. And what about Dataflow? We find that Dataflow is really e easy to use and scalable. It can auto scale on its own, so you don't need to worry about the streaming infrastructure needed to run these pipelines. Uh, could you walk us through a demo? Certainly. Let me show you how this works on Google Cloud Platform, starting with ingesting the transactions. First, let's verify that we have a live stream of new messages coming in via PubSub as real-time transactions. You can view some of these transactions by clicking on View Messages here. As you can see, each message holds transaction details like the transaction date, amount, merchant information, and user demographics required for the ML model to do a prediction. But where is the aggregate data of customer activity? Since aggregate data relies on historical activity, it should be computed on the fly in real time. Let's check that on Firestore. We are using Firestore to store the user's recent transactions and look these up very quickly. To compute aggregates on the recent activity, the Dataflow pipeline will run these aggregations for that user. For example, calculating volume or transaction frequency, and then add that to the raw transaction data we saw from PubSub. At the same time, Dataflow will also update this Firestore record to only maintain the most recent transactions required for future computations. So let's take a look at the Dataflow pipeline. This is our streaming Dataflow pipeline, consuming real-time transactions from PubSub converting them into JSON format, doing a lookup to Firestore to fetch the historical activity, computes aggregations, invokes ML models deployed on AI platform to get the probability of fraud. And once the prediction is done, it will send alert notifications automatically to PubSub so that downstream processes can be integrated. At the same time, it also stores output predictions from the fraud detection model into a BigQuery table. So how does the output prediction look like? The column is fraud model with aggregates is the predicted output with value one being a fraud transaction and zero being a genuine one. Notice how the number of rows here increases from 12,000 to almost 13,000 as new transactions are processed and then stored here in BigQuery. So Ishan, what's the next step? Keeping an eye on how everything is working using dashboards is really useful at this point. So first, here's a dashboard we created for business users. So as a business user, uh, I may ask a question of, where are all the fraud transactions occurring? You can see it broken down by merchant type. You can also see it broken down by geography. And you can even click on specific parts on the map to filter for transactions only in the state of Illinois. And another question may be, how is the rate of fraud detection changing over time? In these graphs, you can see the fraudulent transactions over a period of time and identify the average fraud percentage on specific days. 
Next, we also created this dashboard for a technical team to monitor the health of the pipeline, track the incoming transactions, monitor the output from individual components, and supervise the output notification channel. And what data is this dashboard built off of? This dashboard uses data from cloud operations, which collects metrics, logs, and traces across Google Cloud and our applications. By visualizing this data in a dashboard, it allows a technical user to monitor model latency, as well as the volume of fraud notifications going through Dataflow and PubSub. If there are unusual peaks, or any line seems to be dropping to zero when they shouldn't, then that would tell us that something perhaps is wrong that the technical team needs to address. So if you'd like to know more about the solution or want to see the code, follow the links in the video description to the public code repository. And with that, now you should know how to build a real-time credit card fraud detection solution on Google Cloud. Thank you, Onify, for your expertise as a GCP partner, and thank you all for watching.